that you must go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must experience the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When you have been born again, when you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have everything it takes to have a victorious, glorious Christian life. The name that is above every other name, by the light of the word of God today, your eyes are open. There is something about giving sight to people that is crucial to their destiny. Welcome to another wonderful time in God's presence. God sent His word that was healed and deliver from destruction in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray for you today. God's word will bring healing to you. The word of God will bring deliverance to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. As we Go into your word today. Bless our life through your word. Spirit of the living God, have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Today I'm rounding up on the topic overcoming offense. Overcoming offense. You said that offense is actually the trap of the enemy to bring people into captivity. You see, any time offense is coming your way, it is coming from men, no doubt about it. But at the behind it is the devil. Because the devil had come to know that the best way to stop people's destiny, the best way to put people into captivity, the best way to move people from where God has planted them, the place of their destiny to somewhere else, is through the instrumentality of offense. And you see, offense that are painful, we come from people that are close to us. It is, the, it is those people that are close to us that will actually do stuff to us that will be very painful, that will cause us to be truly offended. Someone that you don't know, a stranger will hardly do things to you that you will be so, um, that, will affect, that will affect you so much that you're not able to forgive. But when it is come for people that are close to you, people that you trusted, people that you've relied upon, people that you want to lean upon, once they betray you or once they do stuff that cause you to be offended, it is normally very painful. So we know from the word of God that offense is inevitable. Luke chapter 17 verse 1. Luke chapter 17 verse 1 made us to understand that it is impossible that no offense should come. Offense will come. It will come for people that you know. It will come for people that you don't know. It will come for people that barely know about you. It will come for people that know you deeply. So we must be prepared. Because the purpose of the devil, bringing offense our way, is either he wants to bring someone into captivity, or he wants to move you from where God has planted you part time so that the, 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 the covering of God will not be able to uh, be extended to you or the provision of God will not be able to reach you. Or he knows that a major breakthrough is coming or a major blessing is coming your way and the devil will instigate people around to cause you to be offended because in being offended, you are bound to miss out on the breakthrough of the blessing of God that is about to come your way. So, and over the century, the devil had been using this strategy against people. My prayer for you is that the plan and purpose and the agenda of darkness of the devil over your life will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. So, there are some times that the, 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 the offense may not really have much severity. May not be very severe. You can you can just 
Fair care, okay, okay. I mean, things are good to go because there's no major impact of the offense. But there are other times that the offense will be so severe. In fact, some offense are damaging. Some offense, some, some offense will come and people will be wounded. There will be major injury. And we cannot deny those facts. But you see, from the word of God, God has made us to understand that we should not revenge. He said, vengeance is mine. You see, any time you take it upon yourself to revenge or to avenge yourself, normally what you are saying is that you, you are the judge and you are putting yourself in the place of God and you are doing what you believe is right. So, vengeance is God. Let God fight for you. If you believe that the Almighty God in His mercy, in His kindness, will always have you cover, that God will never mismanage your life, you can be very sure that at the end of the day, you will be vindicated. Romans chapter 12 from verse 17 to 19. Romans chapter 12 from verse 17 to 19. It says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Verse 19 says, Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. It is only God that can avenge one. It is only God that can avenge you. You see, when, you're, when people offend you, the normal thing, the natural thing is for you to want to get even at, at them. The word of God is very clear. To us, particularly with the children of the kingdom, do not repay evil for evil. Let God fight for you. I see, when God is the one that is fighting for you, he will, he will do much more than you can ever imagine. He will do it in such a way that you will never be put to shame. He will do it in such a way that you will be healed, you will be whole, and you will still be able to fulfill your destiny. So let God fight for you. At the heart of the kingdom message is the message of forgiveness. So there is no way you can truly overcome offense if you are giving to unforgiveness. Like I said, there are some offense that will come and the impact is minimal, little or no impact. There are some other offense that the impact will be so severe and very grave. But irrespective of the offense, God expects his children to forgive. And what, why, why, why is it that we just have to forgive? What, what is the basis for forgiveness in God? Because sometimes you look at what people have done, there are People that have truly betrayed, I mean, they have caused so much damage. They have caused so much damage. All my, they, this abound all around us. People have been offended genuinely. For example, look at Joseph. It was his family, those that are closest to him, those that were sharing his dream and vision with. They are those that offend him. And at the end of the day, he forgave them because he knew, he knew rather, that all that takes for him to fulfill his destiny is to let go. My admonition to you today, be willing to let go. Be willing to let go. Why must you let go? Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18 from verse 23. Matthew chapter 18 verse 23. The word of God is very clear. Why is it that God is expecting his children to forgive, irrespective of what they are going through, what they pass through? He said, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle account with his servant. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle account with his servant. So at the base of our kingdom existence is the message of forgiveness. Why must you forgive? Because it will come to pass that 
your master, our Lord, we set to account with his servant. And let's look at it. Let's look at it more closing. He said, when he began to set to account, verse 24, when he began, when he began to set, when he had begun to set to account, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talent. One was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talent. See, this one that owed him 10,000 talent. He could not pay. So he begged and at the end of the day, because of my time, at the end of the day, the master forgave him. Because he said, even if he sell his if he sell him, sell his wife, sell the children, sell all, all that he had, he cannot still pay. So he, the master decided to forgive him. So he was forgiven by the master. Then not too long. This we know the story very well. This same servant saw another servant that owed him a hundred denarii. A hundred denarii was quite huge. And he could not let go. Because you see, a hundred a, a denarii in the Bible days was a day's wage. So a hundred denarii was a, 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 a hundred days way is like a, a one third of an annual way. Let's assume that this wage, just for our understanding, a day's wage is a hundred dollar. A hundred denarii is like ten thousand dollars. For someone that is earning thirty thousand dollars annually, ten thousand dollars is much. And he find it very difficult to forgive, to let go. And it's understandable. So he put the guy in prison until he can pay him back his ten thousand dollars. Because for someone that is earning thirty thousand dollars annually, ten thousand dollars is much. But you see, when the master heard of what happened, the master was wrought. Because what the master forgave this other servant was ten thousand talent, and from calculation, a talent is six thousand denaries. So ten thousand talent. If a thousand, if a talent is, I mean, if a talent is six thousand denarii, then a hundred talent is six hundred thousand denarii, and that is like sixty million dollars. Sixty million dollars. That's a lot of money. That was what the master forgave this other servant that could not let go of ten thousand dollars. So the master was justified in condemning him, not because ten thousand dollars was not huge, but because of what the master has done. You see, until you can, until you can come to the revelation of the love of God and the magnitude of what God has done for us in Christ Jesus in forgiving us our sin. The sin that we can never pay for. Until you can come to that realization, it will still be very difficult for you to let go of your ten thousand dollars if you are not aware that what you have been forgiven of by the master is like an equivalent of sixty million dollars. And that was why the master was justified. And because he could not forgive, the master said, "Take him to the tormentors." Matthew chapter 18, verse 34. Matthew chapter 18, verse 34. He called him wicked servant. He called him wicked servant. Not because what he was to forgive wasn't much or huge, but because he, 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 is not, he has not come to appreciate what the master has done for him. Verse 34, he said, And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturer until he should pay all that was due to him. You see, Jesus was liking this to the kingdom of God. That if you refuse to forgive, it is even the master himself that will give you over to the torturer. I pray for you today that the Almighty God will give you understanding of why you need to let go. I've told people when I'm counseling that a lot of times you need to let go, not because of that person, but because of your own destiny, because of your, because of your own heaven, because of your relationship with the master. The master was justified in condemning him because of what he has done 
until you can see what Jesus has done, what God has done for us in Christ Jesus, you will not be able to let go. You will be looking at the magnitude of what has been done to you vis-a-vis -vis of your capacity, of your earnings. But it's not about what you're earning. It's about what I have done for you. What God has done for you is massive. Leverage upon the love of God and then let go. So a lot of times we want to get even. We just want to get back. We just want to get back. It, and before you know it, there will be bitterness. And what is bitterness? What is bitterness rather? Bitterness is an unfulfilled revenge. You want to get even at somebody, but you have not had the opportunity yet. And because of that one, you are filled with bitterness. Bitterness. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. We are made to understand that that's what the Bible called the root of bitterness. And it caused people to be defiled. Not just you alone, but many will become defiled. He said, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. Least any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. So when you're having bitterness, when you're having resentment, when you're having this ill feeling towards someone because of what the person has done, know that this root of bitterness that is springing up is going to cause you and many around you to be defiled. And that's not God's purpose for your life. My encouragement to you today, the basis whereby the master is demanding forgiveness for you, from you, it's not, what, it's not because of what you are being owed, it's because of what he has done, or what you owe him, and is willing, he, in fact, he has forgiven you. That is the basis whereby he's demanding forgiveness from you. It's not about the other servant, it's about what he has forgiven you and what he has forgiven you you can never pay you can never never pay so i don't want you to become a victim of tormentors and and, and torturers let go today that's my admonition to you joseph learned that lesson quickly he told his brothers you it is your intention to hurt me it is your intention to harm me but god has turned it around for the salvation of many today. That is from a heart that is full with forgiveness. You see, when it comes to overcoming offense, there's no two way about it. You've got to forgive. Why must you forgive? Because of what the master has forgiven you. It is nothing compared to whatever a fellow servant is owing you. Let go today and let God open a new door of victory for you. Open a new door of abundance for you. Open a new door of destiny for you. In one of Kenneth Hagin's book, he shared the story of a lady, I think the lady had cancer or acute arthritis, one of the two, I'm not very sure now. But this lady came to him and she had been under so, she had, she had, she had depreciated so much and as soon as he closed his eyes to pray for him, God opened his eyes and he saw like a field, but this field had nothing growing on it. The whole land is hard, nothing, no vegetation. So he knew quite all right that it was unforgiveness. So he opened his eyes and said, who has offended you that you have not forgiven? And the lady busted into tears. Talk about the husband that's done, abandoned her, left her with children and all those stuff. It was a very, very, really bad story. But can I take it to her? All you have to do for this affliction to go is to forgive. She cried and cried and cried and cried. After a while, she let go. Not up to two, three weeks or there, but according to the testimony, the symptoms was gone. She was completely whole. Can I take it even pray for her anymore? Say, all you have to do, let go. Once you let go, the tormentor will go. I don't know who is, whatever is tormenting. I don't know the door that unforgiveness has opened in your life. I don't know the level of affliction you are suffering now. 
if it's as a result of unforgiveness, God says he will not even forgive you of your own trespasses if you not forgive your broad, your brethren's trespasses. So let go. It is for the sake of your destiny. The tormentor have access freely to a place whereby there's gross unforgiveness. And beyond that, the most pathetic of all is that people living in unforgiveness are not even assured of their eternal destiny. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he will get this whole world and lose his soul? Anyone that is living in unforgiveness run the risk of not making it to life. And we have a practical example. The founder of our great mission, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, by the name Pa Josiah Akindayomi, went to be with the Lord, but it, it, there's the initial experience whereby he passed on to glory. But when he got to the gate of heaven, as we had in this testimony, in the testimony, the door was not open for him. It was said that he had a harbor of forgiveness against someone or some group of people. But to cut the long story short, he obtained mercy. He opened his eyes and he came back to the world. And straight away, that was the only mission. He reached out to the people involved and he seeked for their forgiveness and they settled it. But this is what really happened. He was full of zeal for the Lord. So he saw a, very, a track that had very wonderful message that he can use for evangelism. So he reproduced it and put the stamp of the church on it, not aware of the copyright law, being an illiterate. So when the other organization that the, the real owner of the track saw the track, they summoned him. So he went there and um, they rebuked him and do all manner of stuff. And he said, he, he, he didn't have any problem with those. But the organization now requested that the entire stuff he has printed be burnt with fire. That he was not willing. So he pleaded with them that if I won't use it, you use it for your own evangelism purpose. If it is one or two or few people that are saved, that's okay, but don't burn it. But their word prevailed against him and it was burnt. It was that burning that pained him. And he didn't let go. But he obtained mercy. He obtained mercy. He was given a second chance to come and make it right. Not everybody will have such opportunity. As you are hearing me today, you have an opportunity to make it right. Put a call through. Send a note. Send an SMS. Release the person. For the sake of your life, for the sake of your life here in time and in eternity. And if you're under the sound of my voice today, you have not given your heart to Jesus. You have not even embraced the offer of God's salvation. You are not going anywhere. There's no heaven for anyone that is not in Christ. The starting point is to embrace, is to accept the offer of God's forgiveness. It is a, it is a debt you can never pay elsewhere. It can never pay any other way. It is only through the precious blood of Jesus that your entire sin and your trespasses and, and your debt before God can be taken away. And if it is your desire today that, Lord, uh, that I want to come before you, Pastor, I know I'm a sinner. I want to make it right with God. I want him to forgive me of all my debt. Put your hand by your chest and say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you today. Have mercy upon me. Cleanse me from all my sins. Write my name in your book of life. And in your kingdom, don't let me be found one thing in the mighty name of Jesus. And I shall pray that prayer. I agree with you that your sins are forgiven. They are washed with Jesus' precious blood. In the kingdom of God, you'll not be found one thing. Your name is written in God's book of life. In God's kingdom, you'll not be found one thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And I now want to pray for someone under the sound of my voice. Forgiving for you is a struggle. You cannot just 
come out of it. You cannot see yourself forgiving the person. Like I've said earlier, you are to forgive, not because of the magnitude of what has been done to you, but because of the magnitude of what God has forgiven you. The debt that God forgave you, you can never pay. And that's why God is expecting you to let go. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit for us to have the enablement to forgive. He said, the, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our heart by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So it is, your, it is your, the revelation of the love, of what God has done, the, the death he has forgiven us because of his love, by the power of the Holy Ghost that you can forgive. So I'm going to pray with you now that more than ever before, the power of the Holy Ghost will come and help you in every decision you must take. You must not be under any torment anymore. You must not be under any affliction anymore. And I pray for that one under the side of my voice that want to forgive, but you don't even know how. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the, you, I mean, you, you, you don't have what it takes. I pray that the Spirit of God will come upon you now. I pray that the love of God will be revealed to you afresh by the Spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that grace will multiply unto you. I pray that you find strength today to let go. In the name of Jesus, I pray that your eyes will be open. That your eyes will be open. You have capacity to let go. In the name of Jesus. And as many areas of your life that is under torment now because of unforgiveness, by your decision to let go, I command the devourer to go. In the name of Jesus, receive your deliverance now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for healing for you. For you that you are still seeing the pain. I pray for healing for you now. I pray that the balm of Gilead himself will heal you today. In the name of Jesus, every painful experience that you have passed through, I pray the balm of Gilead will suit you today. In the name of Jesus, and it shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name, see you in our next broadcast. In Jesus' name, God bless you. That you must go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must experience the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When you have been born again, when you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have everything it takes to have a victorious, glorious Christian life. The name that is above every other name, by the light of the Word of God today, your eyes are open. There is something about giving sight to people that is crucial to their destiny.